Hello and welcome to my podcast. Welcome back if you're a returning viewer or welcome to you if you are here for the first time. I hope you enjoy my podcast and thank you for choosing to spend some time with me today, wherever you are in the world. I've got quite a lot to share. I haven't actually counted out the, the whips. Nothing finished. Uh, lots of things um, in progress. Something brand new that I've never shared here before started. So um, let's just delve in. I haven't even thought about the order, so I'm just gonna grab first thing. No, I'm going to grab the second thing. The first thing wouldn't really make much sense. Grab the second thing. I am back working on my cardigan. Now this is the Mary Rebecca cardigan, which is a pattern by Ellen Mason Designs. And a few weeks ago, it's been about three weeks since I worked on this and then I picked it up this morning. So here I am on the, the main body of the cardigan. It's worked in rows. I need to do something about this. I have an issue with ribbing. Almost all ribbing I do flips up like that. Blocking will sort it, but it bugs me. I think, I don't know. Don't know what it is about it. You can see it's it's almost flaring, isn't it? I don't know if I need to go down two needle sizes and not just one. It's maybe, or maybe if I just need to pull tighter between the knits and the pearls. I did notice that if I went, didn't do it on this, but on um, a sock pattern, I was knitting into the back, um, the back leg of the stitch, and that did make a difference. So I might just have to modify patterns and try that because that was just what the pattern said to do. And um, so I didn't really think about it. I am mainly a crocheter. If you are here for the first time, crochet is my first love, but I do like to dabble in knitting. I like to give it a try. I like to challenge myself with it. I've got this lacy cable thing going on down the side of this cardigan and it's gorgeous. So I've shown you this before. What I wanted to share was the fact that I am working up the second arm. The last day, I mean I haven't done much, I just picked it up again this morning. <laughs> but I also had to wind on 250 grams of yarn because this pink came in a 250 gram skein. It was huge. <laughs> um, it, there was a join, a very clear join in it, so I put it into two cakes. But other than that, I did it all yesterday when my youngest went out with a dog, leaving me the house free to get on and do that without his little interruptions, because this is the sheepiest yarn. I, I don't know what it is. Bought it in a charity shop. Um, it kind of feels a bit like Shetland. Um, it is, I would say, a thicker DK, almost an Aran, but not quite. Somewhere in the middle between a DK and an Aran, I would say. And at the minute I am working the decreases up the inside of the arm. And I have started, I didn't bring it with me because there's not really much to show, but I did do the other cuff. And I'm glad I did because I did it immediately after doing this one because I had to modify the pattern a bit. The pattern, I have it here, is written for a three quarter length sleeve. So I have done the maths and I want it full length. So here is the finished cardi. You see, I want full length. So I've done some maths and worked out how many stitches to cast on. And I went ahead because I had a wee loose ball that had, um, there, there's quite a few joins in this. So I had a loose ball about this size and I thought, I would start the other cuff and just do it straight away while I remembered what I'd done differently um, to what the pattern said. So I have done the cuff. It's a lovely little cuff. Some knit and pearl rows, rounds. Um, yeah, I really like it. No problem with the, um, <laughs> the, the ribbing on that for me. <laughs> Perhaps I should have done the, the base of the cardigan like that. However, yeah, I'm liking that. So. I am, um, let's see, if I put it on my sleeve, yeah, up to about here. So we're nearly, nearly there, maybe another. Obviously the rows are gonna get longer with the increases. But all in all, still very happy with this one. I got the pattern on Ravelry. I just found it, it wasn't recommended to me or anything. I just searched, um, I think, simple cardigan pattern. I'm not sure why that was in the simple, but um, or maybe I just put in cardigan. I can't remember what my 
my uh, filters were. But I found this. Maybe I put one colour because I didn't want to be doing a colour work one. Um, however, this turned up. Brand new designer to me. Ellen Mason Designs, like I say. And let's see, there's another wee picture. Let's see if I can show you another photo. Ah, there. Ah, I didn't get to the back. There is even. Ah, uh, there was a long sleeve variation. I um, obviously printed that and didn't even read to the end of the pattern. That's some uh, <laughs> good advice to you if you're following a pattern. Have a scan through to the end. Um, actually, as a designer, I do often receive questions from folks saying, you know, I can't think of anything off the top of my head, but that information was in the pattern. Um, read, read through the pattern. It's always a good idea. <laughs> Taste of my own medicine there. Just let me get a wee sip of tea. I had a I was just finishing my lunch and something caught in my throat, so um, I hope I don't cough, but here. Yeah. Back on the Rybosch tea with some soy milk in my dragonfly. Where's the dragonfly? There they are. In my dragonfly mug. It's a bit dishwasher. Um, dishwasher worn, this one. Did used to be a bit brighter. It's a lovely mug that my friend Gwen gave me quite a few years ago now, so it's doing well. It's doing very well. And I love the size of it. It's a nice... I'll bring it back. It's a nice big size. I have big hands, so it's even bigger than you might think. So that is my Mary Rebecca cardigan. Um, that is currently my only knitting project. So I'll move on to crochet. I've been working some more on my not-so-granny wrap. This is the starting edge. I am here. Last podcast, I was on this thin pink stripe. So I've done all this magenta and I'm really pleased with how this is working out. I'm ready to move back into the greyish pinkish colour and yeah, well over halfway. It's lace weight, it's by Joanne Scrace um, and I love it. It's slow, definitely slow, but um, as the Cozy Cottage crochet Hannah over in um, the United States always says, you get more buck for your bang with lace weight yarn because um, it's so thin you get to use more of it per uh, gram. You get more wraps, more stitches per hundred gram or per gram than other yarn. So it takes you longer. If you look at it that way, that's quite a nice way of looking at it. I am just looking at it in a using up these three skeins kind of way and I'm enjoying it so why not? I do tend to binge it. I will sit and it'll still be like my number one whip for a couple of days and then I will pop it away and that's just the way it goes. It's actually a good one for the evening because if you pull it back out again, I've just tidied it up, you're working into, it's just granny stitch with a cluster thrown in here and there. There's the clusters. Um, you're working into the holes between, the spaces between, rather than into a stitch. So it's a good one for darker evenings. And I'm keeping it in my Jane Bull bag. This pattern, of course, is the Persian Tiles blanket design by Janie Crow. I love this design. Never made it. Um, I've seen quite a few people making it when I've been at various craft groups, uh, knit and natters, that kind of thing. And it does look like a really, really nice pattern. Yeah, I, I like to do stuff with um, lots of scraps and different colours. And I'm not sure if I was to do that, say, say that this one was to be these colours and then this one over here would be completely different. I'm not sure you'd get the same effect because obviously it is inspired by... Persian tiles so they are more uniform aren't they? Open it out. Um, so I mean I think it would still be a cool blanket but yeah so that's probably why I haven't make it, made it but why I do love it. I love looking at it. Um, I did actually meet Janie Crow way back in 2014 at the Edinburgh Yarn Festival and um, the first and only time I made it to that festival. And my husband bought a pair of scissors from her stall, which he still uses. She was really lovely. Um, and she was fairly new on the scene then. I think she only had a couple of designs out that she had hung up. Maybe even only one design. I don't know which one. 
Um, she had in various colours hanging up around her stall and she was selling kits. Um, and I do remember her being a very lovely lady. And I have another Edinburgh um, Yarn Festival connection because back then at the festival I picked up a drop spindle and some fibre and that was from Spin City UK and her stall was just amazing. I think she grabbed me with, sorry I can't remember her first name, um, she, anyway the the business owner of Spin City UK just grabbed me with her beautiful beautiful colours of um, fibre for spinning. I'd never even tried spinning before. She was doing demonstrations throughout the day. Just She was just spinning with a drop spindle um, the whole time and it just looked amazing. And I bought this drop spindle and I bought some fibre from her, not this fibre. And it has taken me until, I showed this in the Christmas episode, just after Christmas, my new, probably my New Year episode. My husband bought me this, I don't even know what you call these. Does it say on it? No. That isn't the right word. Um, it's unspun fibre, I can tell you that. And this one is, um, it's actually 100% British Shetland and it has been dyed, if you know this ball band. So I do. It's been dyed by Rusty Ferret, who is Liani, Leo, Leona, Leona. Liani is in South Africa. Um, it's by LG, I'll call her LG, you can't go wrong there, um, who lives just up past Aberdeen. And um, my husband bought me this for Christmas and he bought me a skein of uh, sock yarn as well, but he didn't realise that this was unspun and needed something done to it. Fortunately, at our craft group on a Saturday morning, uh, Trish, pardon me, Trish does um, spinning with a drop spindle. So I was able to get her to teach me, and uh, let's get this in a nice light, look, I have managed to produce some fairly thick but fairly even looking yarn. What do you think? I'm quite chuffed with it. No idea what I'm going to do with it other than I think I will ply it. I think I'll make it and then I'll ply it and then I might make I still didn't know what I was going to do. I have actually thought about it. I might make uh, a bowl or something. Um, something. It's feeling quite robust. So I might make something sort of homeware with it. Was my thoughts. If you have any ideas what to do with spun yarn, leave me a comment. Um, because I'm not sure. It's not that even, so it's fairly even. I don't want to pull it off in case I unravel the whole thing. <laughs> uh, but yeah, Trish was really good at showing me the process with the spindle and I think I picked it up fairly quickly. And probably not at the moment because at the moment, although I'm in my craft space, this is my craft space, this half of the room, this bit of the room, all this around here is my middle sun space. So I don't actually have the space, I only have the wall and some of the storage behind me. So I'm missing a craft space. All my stuff is kind of, that I need day to day, is crammed in my bedroom. Um, so the last, it, the timing of it's not brilliant. The last thing I need is a new craft. But um, Trish has been on her travels quite a lot. And the Saturday that she came to craft group was the first time she'd been since Christmas. So I made sure that I grabbed that and used the opportunity to um, speak to her and get a quick lesson. So all that was to go back to the, the Edinburgh Yarn Festival, um, which was great. Really enjoyed it. Me and my husband went together. Um, it was the first time I'd ever been at a yarn festival. I hadn't even been into yarn for that long. Um, so it was all a bit overwhelming. Um, and I think that's when I started knitting stranded colour work. There was a pattern. I think there was an Edinburgh Yarn Festival pattern. Or maybe it was in the the book they brought out a little it was about a fiver um pattern book for the festival i think it was in that and i bought the little kit to go with it and i knitted a stranded color work hat and that was me hooked on stranded color work so yay there's going to be a festival back in edinburgh this year it is um run by different people it will be called a woolly good gathering and um it's allison at murat magazine 
Susan at um, the journal Scottish Yarns together with Yakami Yarns Z Z Zukami. Oh, I shouldn't have said this, should I? And Ioli Yarns. And there could be somebody else in that mix. Um, I'm sorry if I've missed you out. I wasn't even going to talk about this, otherwise I would have had it written down. Anyway, my point is there is going to be a, a yarn festival in Edinburgh again this year. Um, second half of April sometime. I can't remember the date either because I didn't plan to mention it and haven't written it down. So yeah, that's the kind of disorganisation you get on this podcast. Isn't it great? <laughs> I have got a four month old puppy. I am working in a space that isn't even really mine and I have to just grab stuff and podcast. Like we're doing it, we're doing it, we're doing it. Um, yay. Right. So that, I guess, is another whip. I have been working loads on my Battenberg blanket. I've not added too many to here, but I've taken a lot out. I think I've added 30 to 40 squares to my blanket, which is here. So it's currently in quite a boxy L shape. It's almost three quarters of the way there. So around around here is the centre. So this is one edge and then this would be kind of that edge, if that makes sense. I can't quite show it, but you kind of see the L I'm working on, I guess, um, along this way and I'm working this way and I'm just closing in that gap to the corner, if that makes sense. And I've done all this bit. So it's a big boxy L shape. And I've added all these squares here along this edge. Da, da, da. And I've got all the ends done. There are no ends to be seen anywhere. And I have all these ones here on this edge. There we go. Do, do, do. And there. And that is where we're up to. So just, I got, I also, oh, I do have a finished thing. I do, but it's not on me. I finished the socks for my dad. So his birthday was a week ago today and I finished them on the Wednesday morning first thing. I got them soaked straight away. I got them, it was a good day for drying. So I actually got them on the blockers and I hung my blockers out on the washing line and they were finished and I gave them to him on his birthday. So cutting it fine, but I did it and I got them blocked. I, my dad loves them. And yeah, that pattern was Autumn Berries by Caitlin Bart Holt. And it was in the Sock Knitting Bible by um, Lynn Rowe. Rowe, sorry, Lynn Rowe. And um, really enjoyed that pattern, really, really liked it. It was my first lace sock and I'll definitely be doing some more. And I don't have the socks because I gifted them. So I'll pop a picture up and you can see them um, up on the screen. And my next sock pattern, I'll talk about in a moment. So I finished those socks and I then spent the weekend, well, the, the Friday, the weekend, Monday, Tuesday on the Battenberg. I just had a Battenberg binge because it had been neglected a little bit. I'd done the odd square here and there, or a, the odd bundle of four or five squares, um, but I hadn't been doing any joining. So I spent three or four, four or five days just joining squares, really happy, loved working on it, especially now that I mean, it's, that's almost half its width. Um, you know, there's, there's a lot to see in it. You can see that it's it's getting there. Um, I'm past the, oh my goodness, why did I be, make it so big stage? Um, and I'm definitely on the home stretch with it. And I really like it. It's just so sunny and bright and me. So yeah, I've been talking, I, do, I did, a, bulb, I did a, a blog post about um, using up scraps. And I mentioned um, granny squares and things, scrappy blankets. Um, I mentioned small projects like amigurumis and hats. Um, you can go check that out on my blog. I'll make sure that the description, the 
link to that is in the description all the links should be in the description so go and check that out if you look on the the just under the video there's a bit that i can't remember if it says more or just dot 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 click on that and that gives you my bigger blurb if you like and um, tells you all about um, things that i've mentioned and gives you links to anything if i've missed anything out just stick it in the comments and i'll happily add that in because sometimes i've got to be quite quick with the uploading before the uh, the puppy wakes up and we're going around the bend again <laughs> so yeah um sometimes I, I do it quite hastily and i miss some things out so do let me know if i've missed anything out let me know so the blog link should be in there because i tend to copy and paste quite a chunk of it from the previous one so the blog link should be in there and um, so you can go and check that out if you want to know more about my scrappy um tiny scraps oddballs etc advice that's in there and i popped on instagram just to follow on from that on instagram yesterday i just put what is your favorite scrappy project and blankets was um pretty much the overwhelming response to that scrunchies was one that somebody mentioned somebody has made a hundred little owls which i thought was so cute a hundred little owls um that is a good way to use up scraps so anything anything small you know brilliant for scraps um, so yeah, that was good. I am trying to get back into Instagram. I had a bit of a meh fallout with it really, um, but I'm trying to gain back the love and post more on that. I'm liking my blog though. I've been um, keeping up with my blog posts and they are generally released to my email subscribers first before they go up on the blog. So. Um, if you don't want to miss those, please do join my subscription, my, my subscription, my subscribe to my mailing list. Sorry, I don't know. Words are just, I'll have another sip of tea. See if that helps me. Eh? <laughs> right. Yes. Join my mailing list. Um, you get 25, 25, uh, top crochet tips from me straight away as a PDF. Um, this Saturday coming. I have a stall at the Scottish Yarn Producers Showcase, which is in Perth, and that is run by the Scottish Yarn Festival team. And I am going to be giving away copies of my Perth beanie. I got them printed. I got them printed A4. I thought when I chose them, A4 folded would mean this size, right? Kind of A5 when it was folded. I didn't realise that A4 meant A4. Because I thought that would be a nice size for popping in a handbag, whatever. Um, oh no! <laughs> so when I, the box came, it weighed a ton. And I thought, oh my goodness. I know I've ordered a lot of these, but really? Um, but yeah, that's why. And then, then of course, I opened, they're wrapped, they were in the box, they were very well padded. And um, I opened up the first parcel inside it and my heart sank when I saw it was A4 sheets. And I thought, have I got to fold them all? Oh my goodness. <laughs> but no, they are pre-folded. They're done really nicely. I will say, I just got them done at Vistaprint. Um, not, I'm not affiliated or anything, but if anyone's wondering where I got them done. Um, aside from them slight misunderstanding on the size, which is probably more me than them, um, I was very happy with them. I, um, I like the service. So I'm giving these away. I've got a good bundle of them. I'm going to be giving these away on my stall. I'm not selling anything on my stall. I am purely there. Um, I'll have some of my crochet designs that I've designed. I'll have some of them with me. I will have these to give away. And I'll be there to just chat about um, anything yarny. Totally up for that. So. If you are coming along to the festival, do come and see me. I will, it's only in two days time. I'm hopefully going to get this podcast up on time. Today is Thursday, the 21st of March. So I will have these, it's two days time, Saturday in Perth. Tickets have sold out. So it's not really a big shout out to um, come along. The tickets have sold out for the event, which is really cool because I think it's only its second or third year. Um, so it must be a popular event if tickets have sold out. Right, shall I stop waving this around? This is my Perth beanie. I don't think I mentioned it. 
in my latest design that I have had published and yeah it is I should sorry I'm slightly slightly all over the place today you can if you're not going to be at the festival this pattern is up on my website so it is already there for free it is there for just the medium size I just popped the medium size for free on the website and if you want the other three sizes I say three give me a moment yeah three other sizes I've got child teenager medium and large I've written the whole the whole thing in this free pattern um but if you would like to have a look at it that, that one is free on my blog and you can upgrade and buy the full pattern on Ravelry or on my website and I'll give you all the video links as well so there's slightly more detail in the paid pattern but I hope you'll look at the free one first and see what you think and uh, no problem with you doing that so I think I have one more thing to share and that is my next project so careful for Christmas my middle sister Amy gave me this beautiful skein of yarn I think I have shown it off in the podcast it is by I couldn't get this back on um, I think the puppy had untwisted it and sent it everywhere so I just tucked that in I could not get the ball band back on it's by my mama knits that is their little ball band and it's a Glasgow based yarn dye yarn dyer and this is on their chow funga sock base which is 75% merino and 25% nylon this colorway is turquoise number one so I'll pop that back in so I got that yarn from my sister Amy for Christmas however I know she bought it in the Willy Brew in Pit and Ween which is where I bought these two which I probably showed off at the time I bought them back late summer maybe in Pit and Ween same yarn dyer my mama knits I have a mini skein and a big one this one's colorway is called Siren and the small one does it have a colorway oh is beadlet anemone mm. beadlet anemone nice oh it's maybe from a it says it's from the 2021 rockpool countdown mm. it was maybe an advent mini at one time i'm not sure however i really liked it there's these reddish speckles going through here that I thought went very well with that one which is why I bought these to make socks and then I have this one and all three do actually go nicely together these two go nicely together even though there are no red bits in here they still go lovely and so do these two so I'm going to make just some vanilla socks because that is what I need and it's good because it was my sister and the family I suppose who gave me this one for Christmas and my sister's partner Matt tells me that he was slightly disappointed not to get socks from me for Christmas I have gifted him socks in the past and I know how much he loves them and he was kind of hoping that he would get some Christmas past it's his birthday next week <laughs> no chance am I gonna get a pair of socks knitted by then but um, as we're coming into warmer weather anyway I shall give him an IOU and I'll get started on the socks and he will be delighted with that um, so I don't know which colours I don't know if I'll use all three because I part of an idea I had was maybe to use this as the main sock and then these two as contrast because even if I use this one as a bit of contrast I would still get a pair of socks out of it and that would leave me with plenty of this one here for scrappy projects for the socks I made my dad I was left with a wee ball oh, probably like my hands are big um, I don't even weigh it I would say less than five grams um, for those socks I made my dad he is a UK 11 and I did do the largest circumference which was 80 stitches around and then with the the lace work and the decrease I think that probably eight yarn because it was quite big ridges going down it and I very nearly when I finished sock one I very nearly made a ton of um, squares from a Blattenberg for my Battenberg blanket and I'm glad I didn't because that I would have been really stressing I would have been knitting and going oh my goodness this ball's going tiny um, so I've got a few I've got a little bit left 
to make some squares for my batten bag. I probably only get three, three squares. So there was not much, <laughs> not much left over in that at all. So I just wanted to show these ones and they will be on the needles, possibly even by the end of the day. We shall see. Um, I will get them started. I'm quite looking forward to just doing a wee vanilla sock. And yeah, these colours are just dreamy. Um, I haven't met the dark dyer before, my mama knits. Um, I really like to because her colours really speak to me. I've seen the other ones in the Woolly Brew and I mean, I remember choosing these ones and being hard pushed to choose <laughs> choose two colours. Um, I love them all. Um, so I'm looking forward to using up these. I think that is about it for today. I've mentioned festival, I've mentioned lots of things. Um, sorry if I've spoken too fast. Thank you for choosing to spend time with me. I really appreciate that today. Um, maybe I could ask a favour and ask if you did like it, can you send it on to one of your yarny friends um, and share it with them and just help me get some new followers and which will help me grow this channel and bring you more episodes. I'm hoping to do a, a wee episode next week after the the festival on Saturday so I'll probably take my um, phone with me I'll record a few bits when I'm there and then I'll do a little post festival um, chat next week so hopefully I will have bought a thing or two I do know something that I'm gonna have to share um, I do have an exciting project on the horizon still waiting to confirm some details um, and that's why I'm being vague so Something exciting is coming up. Murit magazine will be landing on doorsteps start of next week, which is super exciting. I have a pattern in the this coming ep episode issue. This next issue, I've got a pattern in it, which I am delighted about. Sorry if I just thumped the floor and knocked the camera. I'm um, not sure if I did or not. Don't know why I ever need to say that. Anyway, I'm starting to talk gibberish. I shall uh, let you go. I don't have Lachlan. Um, I'll pop a little thing up here. Um, he's just suddenly got really overtired after his been very windy today. So he was running like a crazy thing on the beach. Um, so I'll maybe just pop a little feature up here and you can see him, see how he's grown and then I'll bring him back hopefully for the next one. So that is it. As usual, leave me a comment with what you've been working on. I do love to read through those and I'm getting better at responding. Um, in a timely fashion to your comments so thank you for those thank you for um, taking time to leave me comments I appreciate them all so love you guys bye